This is our frosty bursim. As you can see, the leaves are very similar to that of alfalfa. They're a long, elongated leaf. The way to tell the frosty bursim, if you've got it growing in with alfalfa, is alfalfa is going to have a serrated leaf edge, where the frosty bursim has a smooth leaf edge. Of course, where the alfalfa is going to have a, a purple flower to a white flower, this is going to have more of a traditional clover type blossom. It's a great forage. It, it's one of the only clovers that's uh, non-bloating. Uh, we did a lot of animal feeding trials in cooperation with Rocky Lemus, Dr. Rocky Lemus at Mississippi State. And uh, we saw great performance, great live weight gains. Uh, it's got great drought tones, really pops out of the ground fast, probably faster actually than crimson clover. Uh, as you can see, I've washed some of the soil off of this root. It's got a branching tap root. Typically those roots would be a lot longer. I accidentally broke them off in the cleaning process. The root depth, uh, we've dug down 36, 40 inches, not uncommon. Great for alleviating compacted soils. It's a nitrogen fixing product, so it creates nitrogen. A uh, little plant like this, with this much foliage, you could easily have uh, 50, 60 pounds of nitrogen. So it doesn't take a lot. There are some anecdotal reports that actually say uh, cows grazing bursium clover uh, experience higher butterfat content. That's something that we're currently exper experimenting and, and checking out to see if that's anecdotal is true. You know, re really high palatable, uh, no refusal ever seen with livestock, so uh, this is something I'd recommend. Like the Balanza, it too has a somewhat hollow stem, uh, so you don't see refusal like you would with an alfalfa. A lot of times the animals will pick around the stems if they get too much lignin in it. You don't see that with the, with the burst seam clover. Uh, it's really a great product either from a forage or from a cover crop standpoint.